Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons. Well, something big just happened yet again, coming on the heels of all these big things we've been talking about. So what am I talking about? Because this is, this is a news story that hit a couple of days ago, briefly got mentioned on a few obscure outlets, and then that's it. Nobody, I think most Americans are completely unaware that this happened. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this news story right here. Iraqi Central Bank to drop dollar for Yuan and trade with China. Iraq is the latest nation in the global south to move away from the U.S. dollar and bilateral trade with China. And we'll talk about what this means in just a moment. It says the Iraqi Central Bank announced on February 22nd that for the first time it plans to allow trade from China to be settled directly in yuan instead of the U.S. dollar to improve access to foreign currency. It's the first time imports would be financed from China in yuan as Iraqi imports from China have been financed in U.S. dollars only, the government's economic advisor told Reuters on February 22nd. So here we have Iraq is the latest nation oil producing nation, the fifth largest oil producing nation in the world, saying we're going to trade our oil in currencies other than the U.S. dollar. This is the latest nail in the coffin of this petrodollar system that was established about 50 years ago that has in part led to the United States having the world's reserve currency. We last month, or no, two months ago, we talked about Saudi Arabia making a similar announcement. President Xi traveled from China, visit, made a huge visit to Saudi Arabia. There was a lot of press about that visit. And in that visit, he openly discussed trading not only, not only Saudi Arabia trading its oil and natural gas for Yuan, but also other nations within OPEC. And here we go. Here's the latest of these. And we've talked about reasons why, but this article goes into some of those reasons why. So let's read down a little bit further. It says, last year, the U.S. Treasury and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York began enforcing stricter controls on international transactions by Iraqi commercial banks, forcing them to comply with specific SWIFT global transfer system criteria to access their foreign reserves. So again, we've talked about this when, when Russia invaded Ukraine. What was the U.S. response? What was the Western response? Well, they quickly issued sanctions against Russia, kicked Russia out of the SWIFT system, and froze Russia's foreign dollar reserves, meaning Russia couldn't access the dollars that it held with the United States, with these other allied central banks that they had traded their products for in the past. And so it was essentially taking their funds. And you may say, well, that's all fine. That's well, they, what they did was bad. I'm not even going to discuss that. But what I'm saying is, what is the result of that? Well, the result of that is other nations look around and say, could that happen to our dollar reserves? Maybe we shouldn't be so dependent on dollars. Because if we get on the wrong side of the U.S., then look at what's going to happen to us. And here we're seeing this with Iraq. All the United States is trying to control Iraq and determine who they can trade with and who they can't. Well, you're trading with bad guys, so let's, you, you're, you, we're going to put all these onerous restrictions on you. So this reads on a little bit further. It says the move was allegedly meant to curtail money laundering. How often do we hear that? That's the same excuse they're using to get rid of cash, put restrictions on cash deposits, cash withdrawals, and roll out central bank digital currency. And the illegal siphoning of dollars to Iran and other heavily sanctioned 
West Asian countries. However, the sudden rules change for Iraqi banks sent the economy reeling as 80% or more of Iraq's daily U.S. wire transfers could no longer be completed. Last week, a senior Iraqi delegation visited the U.S. Capitol to discuss easing the U.S. Treasury measures. Following the trip, Foreign Minister Faoud Hussein denied reports that Washington imposed conditions on Baghdad to help with the dollar crisis. So here we have the United States operating as it has for the last three decades as the lone superpower in the world, and they can enforce these restrictions on other countries and force other countries to do their bidding. In the past, a country like Iraq would say, well, we have no alternative. But now the world has changed and the United States doesn't seem to recognize that. The BRICS nations are an alternative to the Western financial system. When you have a country like China and you have a country like Russia and they've aligned together and they've decided, yes, we will do this. And what the United States in the past would invade nations that did something like this, but they can't invade Russia and China. These are nuclear superpowers. And so what is the result of this? We're seeing nations peel off out of this dollar system, move away from this dollar system. doesn't mean that Iraq won't ever use dollars, but they're diversifying away from U.S. dollars, and the petrodollar system is coming to an end. In fact, you could argue it's already come to an end. This started some time ago with Russia, probably a decade ago with Russia and China, starting to sell off their U.S. Treasury holdings. But recently, it's, it's really ratcheted up since the United States withdrawal out of Afghanistan because that led nations to say, whoa, wait a second here. They just left their own citizens and people that had allied with them, who had helped them behind enemy lines at the mercy of the Taliban, what would they do to us? And Prime among those nations was Saudi Arabia, saying, we have this deal, you know, this petrodollar deal. Sure, we're trading our oil only in dollars, but in exchange, you're supposed to defend us. And yeah, you claimed you would defend Afghanistan. Now we're not so sure that we can rely on you. And shortly thereafter, within the week, they signed a defense pact with Russia. And again, that went unmentioned in Western media. Outside of the internet, few people even are aware of that. And since then, we've seen the BRICS nations start to peel off other countries into their orb. We've seen Saudi Arabia, back in December, make the formal announcement. We're going to start trading our oil and currencies other than the U.S. dollar. We've seen other nations talk about this as well. This, uh, there's links within this article that talk about India and Egypt trading certain items within with other currencies that previously they only traded in dollars. So we're seeing the world's nations move away from this dollar system. So why does all this matter? What does it mean? Well, what it means is the United States as a global superpower is really over. It doesn't mean that the United States is destroyed. doesn't mean that all this happens tomorrow. But it's almost like an a elephant that received a mortal wound and it's still running all around. It still looks formidable, but it's inevitable that its end is near. And the same is true of the United States. Is it, an, it is inevitable that the end is near. Now, Bible prophecy doesn't mention the United States anywhere, much less as a superpower in the end times. So we know that Somehow, the United States loses its superpower status. I still believe that the rapture will be what ultimately leads to the destruction of the United States as a superpower. However, I could be wrong, and sometime before that, the United States could still lose its superpower status. It could still dwindle financially, and thus militarily, because the United States' military power is built on its financial power. It's dominance of the globe financially, which we're seeing go away. Same thing happened with the British Empire. Back in the 19th century, the British Empire, it was said the, the sun never set on the British Empire. The pound was the 
world's reserve currency, it was as good as gold. And then World War I came, and we saw that status go away. They devalued their currency. They broke that link to gold. People were no longer relying on that. You know, the World War I took its toll on the British Empire in many ways, but they were never the same after that. It doesn't mean that the United Kingdom disappeared from the face of the earth, but it was no longer the superpower in the 20th century that it was in the 19th century. And we're going to see the same thing happen here. In my opinion, we're, we're already seeing it happen. We're seeing nations move away from this. And I think it's just a matter of time before we see the United States financial system crumble. Because as the United States continues to raise interest rates, we see the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. This is not only putting a strain on the U.S. economy, but on the global economy. Because all these nations that trade with dollars, even though the dollar is losing its value, it's just a piece of paper, its purchasing power is going down. So are all the other currencies of the globe. There are these little pieces of paper, too, that have no value, that are losing their purchasing power even faster. So a lot of these nations that have relied on the dollar for trade or have linked their currencies to the U.S. dollar are finding it harder and harder to get their hands on dollars, which means they're just going to dump use of them as much as they can and move to other forms of trade. And when they do that, what it means is temporarily we're going to see the dollar seem to retain its value, its status as this uh, valuable currency until it's not, and all those dollars come flooding back to the United States and create massive inflation. So all of this remains to be seen exactly how this plays out. But basic math tells us that with the United States debt at the levels it's at, with all the obligations that they owe, all of the money that's being spent on the war in Ukraine, all of these other programs, this is an unsustainable system that will soon come to an end. And it wouldn't surprise me to see it come to an end in the very, very near future. In fact, I th we've talked before about a depression, and a financial crisis this year. And I think this is just the latest indication that that is coming. We're going to see a currency crisis. We're going to see bankruptcies around the world with really large companies. We're going to see massive financial panic at some point later this year. I, I don't see how, it's, how they can kick the can down the road at this point. And so we're either looking at they crack down and try to preserve the U.S. dollar, in which case we would have uh, the Great Depression 2.0. We would have another Great Depression, just a severe economic downturn. Millions of people would lose their jobs. We would have economic depression. Or they could try to uh, save the United States from defaulting on its debt in which case they would be printing currency and we would see hyperinflation like Weimar Germany did. So those are pretty much the two alternatives that the United States is left with. They're left with de the Great Depression or Weimar Germany hyperinflation. Those aren't two very good choices. And you know, there's a financial trends analyst named Gerald Salente who has often said, when all else fails, they take you to war. And it makes me wonder if that's what we're seeing with this escalation of the war in Ukraine, escalation over Taiwan. They're just taking us to war to cover up what's really happening with our currency, with the global financial system, and the social unrest that's bound to follow when all of this comes to a head and people realize what's happened here. So all of that means that the world is heading for a time of great turmoil in the very near future. And we know in the past when we've had these types of turmoil, especially economically, that we tend to see big changes in who makes up the government. We've seen demagogues rise to power in these times, especially in places like Europe, where they're talking about food rationing energy rationing, the basic necessities of life, 
are starting to be rationed within Europe. And I believe Europe is the epicenter of this coming global depression. Do you think that people will be upset about that? Or do you think that they would say, oh, we're perfectly happy with the political leaders we have now? Or could this all be setting the stage for the rise of a demagogue much like the Antichrist? Could this be the time period where he rises to power? That remains to be seen. I don't think we're going to be here to see his rise to power or be able to identify the Antichrist. But again, all of the events that we see in the world today are setting the table for, laying the foundation for, the fulfillment of prophecies regarding the tribulation period that precedes the second coming of Jesus Christ. So I believe we're very close to and nearing that time. How far away? I have no idea. But we're getting closer and closer. Jesus said, when you see all these things, know that I'm near. I'm right at the door. Your salvation draws near. So, guys, what do you think? Leave your comments below and like and share this. And God willing, I will see you on Monday. Bye. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to sign up for my free monthly newsletter and get your copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Just follow the link in the description to get your free book. Also, make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.